vacuum sealing. That's what you call it when you take all of the air out of something, often a bag, to seal in the freshness of food. I will demonstrate using this Science Max banana. 100% banana, but with added science. Not all bananas contain science. Here's how you can do it at home. Put your food in a bag, seal it most of the way, because we have to take out the air from the bag. And we will do that with a straw. Put a straw inside the bag, and then we'll suck the air out of the bag and then seal it at the very last second. <laughs> there, a vacuum sealed banana. Now I know it's kind of hard to see that it's been vacuum sealed because bananas don't really crush much when you take the air out. So I like to use stuff that has a lot of air in it to begin with. In fact, there are special bags that are specifically for vacuum sealing that are supposed to store big and bulky items that have a lot of air in them like this pillow. See this nozzle right here? It's designed to be used with a vacuum. <laughs> so what you do is you put the vacuum on this nozzle, open it up, and then you turn the vacuum on. Oh. The vacuum is sucking all the air out of the bag, just like we did with the banana. But because the pillow is full of air as well, it starts to shrink and shrink. Then you pull off the vacuum and you tie the seal off and, all right. And, ta-da, a vacuum sealed pillow. Okay, let's max it out. What could possibly be more maxed out than a vacuum sealed pillow? Vacuum sealed fill. Okay, I put plastic bags against the door and then sealed the edges with duct tape. And of course, I didn't put any plastic over my head because you never put your head in a plastic bag, right? Well, let's see if vacuum sealed fill, it works. <sighs> The vacuum sucks all the air from the bag, which seals the bag and me in it to the wall. That means... I should be able to knock this milk crate out from under me. Air pressure, or the lack of air pressure, is keeping me sealed to the door. I'm completely suspended. <laughs> Uh-oh. I shouldn't have done that. Ooh. <laughs> no. Oh, hey, how you doing? Ugh, shut the door, it's cold out there. Ugh, cold enough for you, huh? Well, that's nothing. Let me tell you, you know what temperature water freezes at? Yeah, zero degrees Celsius, but even that is nothing. Let's say it's winter in Winnipeg. It could get down to minus 20, maybe even minus 40, but even that's nothing. Liquid nitrogen, minus 196 degrees Celsius. But even that's nothing. The vacuum of space, minus 271 degrees Celsius. But even that's nothing. So what's the coldest temperature? What? What's the coldest temperature you can have? It's called absolute zero, minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, all the little wiggling that particles do comes to a stop. Everything is frozen. No more movement, no more energy. Everything stops. It doesn't get any colder than that. Absolute zero is the ultimate nothing. Brr. Time to get your mittens on. Greetings, Science Maximites. My name is Phil, and it's moving day today on Science Max Experiments at Large. Let's see, where do I put this? Uh, this is probably a good spot. <laughs> today, we are moving air. You probably don't think that moving air will have a huge effect, but you'd be surprised what you can do by just moving air. But don't worry, we're not just gonna move the air around in boxes. We are going to build a rocket! And this rocket uses the science of stomping on something with your foot. This is a stomp rocket, and it works by stomping on this plastic bottle, and air shoots through this tube and pushes the rocket up into the sky. 
and here is how you can build one of your very own. And remember, if I go too fast, don't worry. All of the steps are on the website, so you can follow along at your own speed. All you need is a two liter plastic bottle, three kinds of tape, electrical tape, duct tape, and science tape. Science tape is just the same as invisible tape, but I use this kind of tape for science. Then you want some plumber's tubing and some construction paper to make your actual rocket. First, you want to take your plumber's tubing and cut it into three lengths. And when I say you, I mean an adult, because you need to use a saw. So you saw it up into a long piece, a short piece, and an elbow piece. We want to make a long tube at the top, and then we also want to make a tube at the bottom so we can attach our two liter bottle to. And there we go, ta-da, ready to go. But of course, it doesn't stay up, so we have to attach it to a base. And it will look like this. And you see, it's been attached with duct tape here, and I've used electrical tape, and I've wrapped that part around there. Now, building the rocket. Wrap the paper around the tube and tape it with your science tape. Tape the top closed so no air escapes. Then cut a semicircle to make the nose cone and three hoops for thrusters and tape them to the bottom. There you go. The rocket fits on the tube just like that. And when you stomp on this bottle, it launches. But here's the most important part. The one most important rule of launching rockets. You shoot rockets outside. Come on. Once you get outside to a nice open area, and you bring your safety glasses with you. All you need to do to make the stomp rocket work is, of course, stomp on it. You ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Whoa! You see that? That was amazing. Heather and I have been on a quest to recreate lightning using static electricity. We've gone from balloons to a bandograph to a Jacob's Ladder, each more lightning-y than the last. Finally, Heather suggests we use a... Tesla coil. Oh, is this named after Nikola Tesla? Yeah, he invented it. Oh, one of the founding fathers of electricity, right? right I love on. Nikola Tesla, he's cool. <laughs> so how does it work? So the way this works is it is a step-up transformer, okay. meaning we take a lower voltage and bring it up and ramp it up to a much higher voltage. Okay, so normal voltage is 120 volts. That's what we have a normal plug-in Typically, socket. we're getting it out of, yeah, exactly. And we're gonna ramp that up to really high amounts upwards of 25,000, maybe even 250,000. Wow. Volts. That's a lot. And, and that... all that charge buildup, we're gonna see something pretty amazing happen. Okay. Do you wanna see it? Yes, I'm, we stand back there, right? Yeah. Let's check it out. And... Yeah! The Tesla coil builds up a charge which jumps through the air to this neutral rod just like a lightning bolt. We made a lightning bolt! That <laughs> totally jumped a long way. That was impressive. That was a really good one. So can you control it? Yeah. OK, show you me. Wanna see? All right. I'm going to lower my frequency. OK. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, it's like a scattered lightning bolt. Oh, wait a minute. So you can play different notes? Play different notes. Hold, I need five minutes. Hold on. Okay. Okay. All I need is five minutes. You know, I was thinking is if you can make different, hold that for a second. If you can make different frequencies, that means you can make different notes, right? Right. So I'll, I don't need that either. Hold on. Ah, that's not what I need. Okay, one more thing. Can I get that hammer? Yeah. Okay, ready to go. So what is this? When you told me the Tesla coil could play different frequencies, I thought we could make different notes come out of the Tesla coil. So I programmed it to play the notes of the Science Max theme song. What? Yeah. You want to hear? Yeah. Let's try it. Yeah! Science Max experiments at large. Lightning bolts. Please lightning. We have Woo! created lightning. Woohoo! Lightning dance. No. Uh. 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 
I give up. Ah!